So in this video, I'm going to try out all the different modes on this Hover Air X1 Pro from a mountain biker's perspective. I'm going to test side track, dolly track, follow me in all the different variants and also in different terrains to see what works and what doesn't. Maybe I have to film this on different days because it's cold as hell right now and it's windy as well. So let's give it a try. I did a rather extensive review of this Hover Air X1 Pro only a few months ago, but already things have changed. A lot of things and for the better. So let's get straight into it. What has happened is essentially firmware updates. Quite a few of them actually. Bugs have been ironed out, new functions have been added, and something tells me that Zero Zero Robotics isn't done yet. A few examples. If you have this beacon, the microphone is now working and whatever you're saying or your heavy breathing will be added to your drone footage automatically. There are a few settings here as well, mainly around noise reduction. The connection between the drone and the beacon now works a whole lot better. I think the drone was released a bit prematurely because of DJI's announcement of the DJI NEO. So there has been a few bug fixes along the way. And the experience with using this thing is now on a completely different level. There has been a ski mode added just recently. And this is a variant of the follow mode, which has been optimized for target recognition and the terrain. The camera settings are also changed to work better with the bright environment. Right after that, a cycling mode was added. And this is the interesting bit for me. It's kind of a game changer, and that's something that I rarely say in a video. I will show you why in just a minute. The cycling mode is also a variant of the follow mode, but with tweaks to make the drone follow a biker much more exact. And this is such an important update and makes the drone much more usable, especially in the type of terrain that we have up here in the Nordic countries. There are rarely any open landscapes here, but rather very narrow trails with lots of trees, bushes and branches. That makes it sometimes nearly impossible to fly any drone behind a bike. Until this update, that is. This is how the old Hover Air X1 behaves in a tight switchback trail. This really is a selfie drone made for hikers and runners. I can still use it to capture a few seconds of cool bike footage though. But as you can see, it goes wide in the corners and I have a lot of crashes all the time with this drone. With that said, in its favor, it's still alive and functions well, so it can take a crash or 30. The Hover Air X1 Pro is very different from the old X1. It's much more powerful and faster. The follow mode is also not as lazy. And here the drone cuts corners instead. The drone aims at the trajectory towards the object it's following. And I think that works much better for mountain bike riding. But crashes do happen, despite a better tracking function. So yesterday, the new cycling mode was released and things changed for the better. There are two different settings here open area setting and narrow route setting. I found that in open area setting, the drone will still follow the cyclist with better precision, but for tighter places, the narrow route setting is a lot more aggressive. The drone stops on a dime and changes direction much more precise. And it needs to in places like this. Open area setting makes for more cinematic videos, but with narrow routes, there will rarely be any crashes. In fact, I challenged the drone in some very tight sections where I was absolutely sure it would crash, but it never did, not even once. That was amazing. Regarding those updates though, my last ride, which was the messiest and the tightest ride of them all, was never recorded or the video was never saved. So I'm assuming Zero Zero Robotics will continue to push out even more bug fixes and have no doubt that they will do so. I never showed this in my review video of this drone, 
but I had a big crash that almost destroyed the drone. Oh shit, gimbal is damaged. This was before the safety mode update. I managed to mend the drone, but that day in the bike park was kind of ruined because of this, since it happened in the morning. I'm quite sure this would never have happened if the cycling mode was available then. I'm a lot more confident that the drone can fly in this type of terrain now without crashing despite the lack of any crash sensors. The crash sensor at the rear of the drone is pretty useless to be honest, at least for mountain bike riding. I just saw now when I got back home that there's another setting within the cycling mode. It's called follow orientation. Only back is available for the moment, but I hope there will be an option to have the drone following with better position from different angles in the future. Right now, the side track and dolly track functions are a bit limited. Nope, doesn't work. Perhaps we will see an improvement here as well. I really hope so. Side track and dolly track modes are not really meant for tight switchbacks and the drone moves a bit erratically and loses its position in the turns. Dolly track in the forest is not ideal either, as the drone frequently changes position, which can make it crash. There is a crash sensor in the rear of the drone, which detects objects if you're going slow enough. Open areas work a whole lot better and even steep climbs work well. And if you're going straight, side track works at higher speeds too. This is filmed with the older Hover RX1, and even that works fine. If I can wish for something around this new follow orientation function, it would be to be able to track me from a greater distance. I want different perspectives for my shots. And an epic perspective like this is high up on my list. Is it possible to give me that too, please? While I'm at it, I also wish for the far option in the cycling mode to be a bit further away again to get a different perspective. Maybe that can be a challenge when it comes to tracking, but I do have the beacon, which I think should help. Another function that is announced is that the video can come with speed data. You know, like on a GoPro. That could be pretty cool and makes this drone even more of a drone for action sports. These recent updates have truly transformed the Hover RX1 Pro into something more than I hoped for when I first got it. This also shows that this is a good platform to build on, and I can't wait for any other functions and improvements that will come in the future.